Hey there, Warhammer fans, um, <clears throat> fans of the Andy and Rem show, or fans of just what I do here um, at Remington Warhammer. This is Remington. Hey guys, you all right? Um, so I finally caved and I'm going to present to you Pillow Talk with Remington. It's been a long time since I did one of these and you might be thinking, <clears throat> uh, I'm not lying in bed and where's the pillow? Well, this is as good as it's going to get right now, um, but you know. It could be a metaphorical pillow talk, you know, from me to you. Um, so I posted a bunch of questions out on the... Um, actually, I only posted one question, and that was, uh, do you want to write some questions for me? And I put them on Facebook, put them on the Andy and Rem Discord. So I'm going to address some of those questions. So God bless you for asking me those. And um, yeah, let's go. I don't know if they're all Warhammer Age of Sigma related. <laughs> Christ. Anyway, whatever. It's live TV. What can you do? So the blinds are open, and here we go. On to the Discord. Dead Gamer. <clears throat> Questions for Pillow Talk. Why are you so rad? And subsequently, how can I be a shadow of the radness you are? Is that redness or radness, uh, dude? So I don't know. I don't think you can. You can. You should tr even try to be as rad as me, dude. Because. Uh, you know, you're pretty rad yourself. Uh, so, Dead Gamer, when I come to California, I need to hook up with you. Uh, this dude's got, like, mountains full of models. And I think he needs some help clearing them out. Or at least uh, choosing what to keep and what not to. So, dude, you're a dude. Anyway, does Mrs. Remington know how lucky she is? Probably not. I'd have to say, probably not. But um, she's an absolute sweetheart, so... I can't really complain on that front, so that's all good. If you were born into the animal kingdom, what animal would you be and why? Well, I once saw a white witch, and um, <clears throat> basically, it, it, you could you could also call a white witch a warlock. So it's a, a male witch, and uh, I was on tour with the band, and uh, the guitar tech for the band also worked for Radiohead, and we spent a lot, a lot of time together. I'm um, just chilling on the on the tour bus and um he once let it slip that he was uh, a white witch and he said to me um do you want to know what your spirit animal is and I went sure you know and I'm thinking let it be a dragon let it be a tiger you know the usual kind of male thoughts I, I suppose and uh do you know what he said he said your spirit animal is a badger So there you go. I don't think I've ever seen a badger in the wild. Um, I've only ever seen badgers been run over on the roads over here. So I've seen lots of dead badgers. I see badgers. If you were born, okay, paper or plastic? Paper, I'd say. Paper every time rather than plastic. What's your favourite movie of all time from the sci-fi genre? Ooh, that's a... Oh, from that. Um, Interstellar, I'm going to say. I love that film. Very thought-provoking, mind-boggling, very emotional. Beautiful film. Scary as well, right? Um, yeah, Interstellar, my favourite one. That might change, um, but yeah, that's what I'm saying for now. And what's my favourite film from the fantasy genre? You can't get past Conan the Barbarian, really. It's just got that weirdness to it that's... You know, not everything's explained, and I do like that. And um, it sure beats the remake of Conan. Um, but I think Conan the Destroyer really sucked. Some people like it. I thought that film really sucked. But there you go. Yeah, the original Conan for me is my favourite fantasy uh, film. So thanks, Dead Gamer. A few more from you, my friend. If I was a pit fighter, what weapon would I wield? If I was a pit fighter, what weapon would I wield? Oh, that's a good one. I think a ball and chain is pretty deadly, but unless you wield it with absolute skill and you, you, you keep it sort of swinging, it can be real dead weight there, can't it? Um, and that's where the term ball and chain comes from, isn't it? So we say the ball and chain. That can often mean, at least in England where I live, the ball and chain could mean your partner or your wife. Why? Because you the sort of heavy weights that you're dragging so um yeah i don't know why i even picked ball and chain 
I don't know, it's kind of cool, but if that thing hits, it can be devastating. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that one for now. That might change. Has it ever burned when you've peed? And how do you get rid of it? Because I'm currently having that problem. Okay, so you need to take some tablets on that, my friend, and drink plenty of water and, um, you know, cut out the alcohol and possibly the red meat there. So plenty of roughage in your diet and water. And also cranberry juice can help. If Remington Industries produced a cologne, what would it be called? Now, Remington Industries is one of my many companies as an entrepreneur. And we uh, we kind of invent and get on the uh, the drawing table, as it were, some wicked inventions, especially for the fantasy gaming um, space. Um, so, yeah, if Remington Industries produced a cologne, what would it be called? Well, I liked uh, I like Magnum. It's a good name. Savannah. Savannah's quite nice, isn't it? Savannah is a good name for Remington Industries aftershave. Or just simply Remington. I mean, Remington just evokes, you know, discipline, power, courage, confidence. What is Rem's guilty pleasure food? I don't know if you have them in America, but I would say mint matchmakers. So they're kind of like twiglets of chocolate um, with a hint of mint inside. Also come in an orange flavor and sometimes a toffee flavor. And I've even tasted coffee flavor once, but the mint flavor is the one for me. Can you make a Remington 360 how-to video? I want to try it with my girlfriend. I think that's for a private video, that dead gamer. I'm not going to reveal the Remington 360 in public there. But thanks, brother. That was dead gamer's questions. And we've got a couple of questions from my wargaming partner. And, um, yeah, that will be Andy2D6. And Andy is asking, what are you saying here, Andy? Why don't you use potpourri on your bases anymore? Well, I was living at my mum's house for a, a couple of years and um she just had loads of potpourri around and i was building uh a few armies at the time beastman army vampire counts and uh i wanted to base um oh actually a wood elf army as well i was building all three over a number of years and um for my wood elf army i i used to get autumn sort of foliage moss leaves and stuff but uh, they initially looked great on the base but they decayed over time even when I just put some like glue over the top or some kind of protector, it didn't really work out too well. So um, I saw my mum's pot bori lying everywhere. It looked like the perfect way to base your miniatures and make them smell nice. So um, the fact is I haven't lived at my mum's for a few years now. So uh, yeah, that's why I haven't used pot bori. I might do. Potpourri is usually too large, so you'd have to find small pieces, really, to make your bases look good. How many years will we have to wait for Pillow Talk Episode 3? Well, maybe not too long, mate. I'm, I'm quite enjoying this. I think I've got my groove, I've got my flow, so I found a little bit of time on a Friday. Maybe that's the best time, because no one else is, is here, and uh, it's very peaceful. So I've got myself a nice little recording kit, a top-class microphone as well, and a decent camera, so... Um, yeah, we've got, ooh, here we go, David Kitely, hello my friend, fellow Leicesterian from Leicester, UK, greatest football team in the land. What's Rem's favourite ever model? Oh man, that's a really hard question to answer, I mean, what's your favourite model? I mean, you know, just try and think about that for a second, what's your favourite um, fantasy model, Age of Sigma or Warhammer? That's a really hard question to answer. Do you know, I can tell you what it is at the moment. It's the Loon Shrine for the Gloom Spike Gibbs. It just looks awesome. And if you watch our latest battle report that I've literally just released today, you can find it on my channel, you can see the Loon Shrine in action. All right? So, yeah, I'm going to say the Loon Shrine. It's full of some wicked detail. It looks awesome on the battlefield as well. So thanks, David. Why is Leicester City... Why is Leicester the best city, especially the full? I don't, you know what? I don't think it is the best city. I've I've managed to travel around the world, and um, 
a lot of city centres look very similar to each other because of the big shops. You know, you get this, you get Boots, you get McDonald's, you get the set Costco, uh, you know, Costa Coffee. You get the same old corporate sh shops, and it's kind of ruined British town centres. I don't know. Is that the same in Europe? Is that the same in America? Um, but as someone who's travelled around the world, I can definitely say Leicester is not the best place in the world. But you know what? It's better than a lot of other places and it's very central so it's great for touring if you're an abandoned UK because you can get to most places within two hours so yeah Leicester is really good for that you could say Leicester's really multicultural but in it's very diverse um, in terms of its population but is there a sense of togetherness well there is because of the the, the sporting achievements for sure and of course we recovered the bones of King Richard III the Duke of York, so that's kind of really special. And I used to walk past the uh, the small car park to go to work, where he'd been buried for the last um, five hundred odd years. So that was kind of ironic, because I was a I was a real I'm really into history, and I was a real real like um, you know a junior expert on the Battle of Bosworth itself, having visited the Battle of Bosworth Field um, as a child many times. So uh, there you go. Um, how many old white dwarves do you have? Well, I never collected white dwarves. Um, I had a couple from the 80s. Um, so, yeah, I, do you know what I do? I tend to read them in the shop. So I'll go to a big supermarket, and if they've got one there, I'll flick through. Um, partly because white dwarf became way more 40k centered than it was Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigmar. So... Uh, I think that, that kind of put me off. If it was literally just Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigma or the Old World, I'd probably be I'd probably subscribe to it then. Um, here we go. What would you like to come to Melton Mowbray? I'll get you a proper pork pie. Would I? Um, yeah, I'll come to Melton Mowbray. Um, when was the last time I was in Melton Mowbray? I think I saw the Foo Fighters performing at Melton Mowbray at the. Uh, or was that Milton Keynes Bowl? Yes, yeah, sorry, it was Milton Keynes. Would I like to come to Melton Mowbray? Melton Mowbray is more of an old, old English town, very famous for its pork pies and um, its farming community. So, yeah, I'd like to pass through there. Maybe you could show me around and I like nature. Maybe we, we could record um, an episode of Pillow Talk featuring David Cartley. That'd be kind of cool. What's my band, Uncle Frank, up to now? Um, I'm in a band, it's called, I'm in three bands actually, one of them's called Uncle Frank, and that is uh, me on guitar, and I write the songs and I sing harmonies, and my buddy Frank, who is the front man, and we own a studio together, so we make a, we make lots of music over there, and um, yeah, we release music, and when we can, we do gigs and tour, uh, it's kind of sucked for the last 18 months, there's literally been nothing happening, with gigs because of the uh, pandemic situation and cancelled shows but what we have done is make a new album so that album's being uh, mixed and mastered in America at the minute so that's kind of fun um, so that's what Uncle Frank are up to so we've also got some record labels interested that might want to release this album next year so that's exciting so um, there's not much going on on the social media side of things it's probably my fault because i only really like putting things up when there's actual news you know rather than just putting pictures of up of uh you know the band in the shower or on the toilet it's kind of like i know these days you're supposed to keep the social engagement going and you know i suck at that so what can you do um is Frank still on BBC Radio Leicester? Yes, he is. My friend Frank, who is the front man of Uncle Frank, has his own BBC radio show, which I've appeared on, I think, three or four times already. Uh, but yeah, that's on Sunday evenings between 6 and 10 p.m. Uh, on 104.9 FM. So there you go. Cheers, David. And we've got Wazgob here. Dick Licorice wants to ask why you never return his calls. Uh, Dick Licorice was a famous... Uh, famous flasher from um, Northampton he had a very short career and he got caught flashing by uh, a police a policewoman 
and he got arrested. And I read that story in the newspaper when I was a child and called my first fish Dick Licorice. So there you go. That's probably why he never returns your calls, Was Gob, because Dick Licorice is a fish. Was Gob's posted a couple more extra questions here. Do I add milk to tea? I don't drink tea anymore. I just have coffee. But were I to drink tea, I would probably drink red bush tea. And I like a little bit of single cream in it, I think. If I was to add milk, probably semi-skimmed. Uh, and I would add it definitely after it's brewed. Okay. If you want to make a rubbish cup of tea, put the tea bag in. Then put the milk in, then put the hot water. It's just not the way things are done. So, Dob says, hey, Dob, I would say a bass guitar needs to be slapped. Pillow talk question. Down pillows, foam pillows, or polyfills? Neck pillow, body pillow, leg pillow. What is necessary? I need to know. Uh, I would say down, because that sounds like the most expensive, luxurious one goose feathered pillows so i would go with that my friend um okay well i think that's the end of those questions for now um i do think i do believe there are some questions on the andy and rem show facebook page as well so let's have a look at those as well um how do you even get onto that? Okay, I'm on it. Okay, I'm on it. Here we go. Now, this this used to be a real hubbub of activity. Um, so God knows what's happened. Um, I think there's just there's so many, so much to do, so little time. Um, so yeah, that will be that really. Um, okay, I'll look on my page because I can't find it on Andy's. So let's look at my page. I did post some questions. I'm sure I did. Urgent announcement. Submit questions for Remington's Pillow Talk. Uh, no one's asked anything. <laughs> well, that's cool. That was an easy getaway. I did, I, I'm did. i sure there is some on the Andy and Rem page. So I'm just looking now. And we'll find them. Because... Urgent... And, oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, we've got six questions here. Neil Gardiner, Remington Steel. Have you had a chance to look at the responsive terrain building I sent you from Outlands Terrain Sales yet, dude? Now, what this chap is referring to is some terrain that he sent me, an old colleague of mine. So let me just get the terrain and I can do a live plug for it now. How about that? Look at this. This is Outlands Terrain. This looks like some kind of uh, la, brass, la Brasserie or the pub. So it's like an old school, you could you could say it was a, a medieval type pub. Maybe a 17th, 18th century pub. Um, that needs to be built by me. And that's going to be a separate video. And I need to, pay, I need to paint it as well. But if you love the smell of freshly lasered MDF in the morning, then check out Outlands Terrain. So there, okay. It's a new range of things coming out soon. So thank you, Neil, for sending me this. For best results, first prime with an MDF primer or watered-down solution of PVA, PVA glue. Wow. Then get a beer and some paints and go nuts. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, I've given Neil some suggestions on perhaps future MDF terrain to build because he's a, he's a master laser cutter at terrain uh, and all sorts of things when it comes to um, sort of technology, woodwork, plastics. And um, yeah, I've told him to make some sort of more fantasy things. So let's see what he comes up with with that. Um, so back to the questions. We're going to wrap this up fairly soon. How does the Warhammer army of your life looks like? Wow, what's the favourite part of the hobby? This is Alex Strider. Hey, Alex. And why don't you spend more time on it? Well, my friend, I don't spend enough time on it. Who does, really? Because, you know, any hobby or interest I've, I've ever got into, you get to this point where you've got to commit more and more to it for it to give you the value 
or the 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 progress that's required to get into it so when i was young i, I started doing karate and for me it was just uh, an exercise thing once a week but very soon if you wanted to progress in the in the sport in the discipline you have to commit more time to it and you'd, you'd have to go to weekend camps away doing the karate you'd have to go to more grading uh and special classes and um well wargaming is no different really because it's a, it's a very active hobby one you've got to research right you've got to look at what's what you like and what you don't like and then make a decision and then make a financial investment and then you've got to make an investment of time into painting it and that requires a lot of skill and then of course you've got to read through the army and what it can do and what it can't do and start playing the actual game um so it's a huge investment of time and um i did spend half a decade getting to the point where i painted a number of armies that's how long it can take right if you're in and out of the hobby and you're not just literally focused on one army in particular because you're like a like me if you're a kid in a sweet shop you, you just kind of like a bunch of figures so i would say just laser focus on one unit or one army at a time so um it's, they're all my children my friend it's hard to it's hard to say which one's my favorite you know what's my absolute most loved and full of nostalgic memories miniature i think one of the first miniatures i bought was an old lord of the rings um line from 1985 and i bought i bought boromir so you, you got boromir from lord of the rings on horseback and on foot and that was kind of one of the first miniatures I had. So that's had some meaning to me. Um, does the pillow sometimes talk to you too? Not really. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. What is the meaning of a good life? The meaning of life, I think, of a good life is contentment, I think. Being content with um, what you have. And if you're not content, you you have to make changes. And that's... That can take a lot of courage and bravery. You have to do a lot of research to give you the confidence that you 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 are doing the right thing. So it's not just intuition. It's it's research as well. Contentment. Um but I've become very content actually, I have to say. But maybe I was always content, you know. I think two and a half years ago, three years ago, I was stood in my flat knee deep in sewage. You know what I did, Alex? Didn't panic. I laughed. I laughed because I knew God was giving me a sign that I had to make changes. And so it was wonderful that here was concrete evidence that um, I needed to do that. It wasn't just it wasn't just on a whim. So I did. I was very happy for that. It was the catalyst for a lot of great things to come after that. So if you can smile in the hours of direst need, I think that's a really good sign of mental health and mental wealth and contentment. So there you go. What's my favorite Iranian food? Well, I'm half Iranian. So my favorite Iranian food is khoresh sabzi, um, which is like a spinach dish served with rice, red kidney beans, um, sabzi herbs which are a mixture of of parsley um spring onion um a lot of few secret things in there sometimes you can do it with lamb you can do it with chicken you can do it with turkey um or you can do it with uh, artificial meat or no meat at all if you like uh it's got dried lemon and it's it's just very nice it makes me feel good and it's got uh oh, it's got one ingredient in there that um Whenever I've, it just makes me feel really good having this particular herb. For one thing, it clears my nose. I don't know why. I often get have a lot of problems with my nose. So, uh, yeah, I might do a whole episode on Khoresh Sabzi if anyone's interested. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, Raphael Marge, hello, buddy. How have you started playing miniature war games? First model and then armies. I did, I did. I think I did respond to this um, just a couple of minutes ago. Um, 
Yeah, well, I didn't really know anyone that played it. I, 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 we, me and my friends, when I was 11, 12, we sort of tried to play, but no one really read the rules properly. Um, and, and that's something I'm still guilty of now, I suppose, which is probably why in the last few Age of Sigmar games, especially my first turn, I really freeze. I have a brain freeze, and I'm not sure what to do. And, um, yeah, I even did that a couple of days ago in the last battle report, so... Uh, that's something I've really got to get over, is first turnism. Mitch Cowan. Hey, buddy. This is a very good friend of mine, all the way from... Are you still in New Jersey? Wow. Is it too late to submit questions? Oh, shit, that's a question. Do we only get one? That sort. No, you get as many questions as you like, Mitch. Why do I do this to myself? Oh, he's given up. He didn't ask a question. Well, he kind of did, but it wasn't a real question. So, Mitch... It's great to hear from you. I hope you're okay, buddy. I'd love to hear from you again soon, man. Um, and there you go. So that was Remington's Pillar. I don't think I talked about Age of Sigmar too much, but um, you know, if you want me to talk about specific things and that, I'll talk about what I know, which sometimes feels like very little when I watch other channels that real deep dive into stuff. But with me, you know, maybe you get to know a bit more about my life and um, and because that's what you asked me to do so there it is um god bless you all i've just received the penultimate delivery from mortal realms which i think this one here is um the mortis engine but uh, i'm going to be building it as a coven throne because that's how i roll take care guys if you like this and want more subscribe to my channel i've got 667 followers how about that it's not bad and um yeah i'd love for you to join me and uh, i've got so much to talk about i don't even know if this is the right place to put this up but there you go if you're painting or you're traveling to work and um you know or you just like looking at my face that's all good take it easy and god bless